ChatGPT has a brand new model. It's called GPT-40 Mini. It's free, it's fast, and it's actually pretty good. It compares closely to GPT-4. In this video, I'm gonna run it through five different practical prompts so we could compare it with the existing model GPT-40. And I'll also show you all the new things that come with GPT-40 Mini. Okay, so ChatGPT now has three different models to choose from when you open up ChatGPT. I'll talk about the API in a second too. So if you're a developer or a business owner building on top of GPTs, I'm gonna explain what they've done because they've completely changed which model you should choose now. But GPT-4 inside of ChatGPT-4.0 is the best model. It's still the best model. But before, when you ran out of credits, it defaulted you back to GPT-3.5. And GPT-3.5 these days is not very useful. So now GPT-3.5 is completely gone. If you run out of credits inside of GPT-4.0, it brings you down to GPT-4.0 Mini. Now, these are the models that are available. So if you compare them, GPT-40 still is the best model, latest, fastest, highest intelligence. GPT mini is a lightweight model. So it's much faster than GPT-40. It's way, way faster than GPT-4. And before, if you use GPT-3.5, you're also going to notice an improvement in speed and obviously a much better quality now with GPT-40 mini. And the context window it's the exact same as the best model, 128K context length, which is an average length of a novel. If you're not familiar with context window, it's basically how much you could give to ChatGPT and it will actually remember that during a conversation. That's your input and output inside of a chat. 128K is huge. And I've really not had much of a limitation when I use ChatGPT 4.0. So now we have that inside of Mini, which is the free version. And I'll link these two pages that I've been showing you here in the description below this video, but they also showed it compared to other models. So GPT-40 mini, this is the orange here. And these are the other models like Google Gemini Flash is the small model from Google. Claude Haiku is the smallest model from Claude. This is the old GPT-3.5 Turbo and GPT-40, the best model available right now, which is kind of comparable to Claude Sonnet, which is the best model available from Claude, which they're not showing here. But GPT-40, look how close GPT-40 mini is coming to GPT-40 in these tests. And compared to these other small models, completely at a different level in most of these cases. Now GPT-40 mini also has a knowledge cutoff date like most of these models have, knowledge up to October 2023, which is pretty recent for these large language models. This is less than a year old. And before I show you the prompt, as far as the API goes, if you're using GPTs to build your app, if you're a business owner or developer, they've released this new model to replace anyone that is using GPT 3.5. And the reason is right here, it's priced at 15 cents per million input token and 60 cents per million output token, which is more than 60% cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo. A lot of people use this because it's very inexpensive compared to GPT-40. So when you're building apps, you're not paying that much to OpenAI to use their API when you're using this model. But now there is no reason to not upgrade to GPT-40 mini, use a better model and pay less money. So they're basically telling everyone, hey, if you're using that switch, if you're using 4.0 to build your app and you feel like it's too expensive, well, you may want to downgrade and save a whole lot of money in the usage of your API. So this is related to the API and you could read about it on this page here. And as far as when it's available inside of ChatGPT, in ChatGPT, free plus and team users can access GPT-40 mini starting today instead of using GPT-3.5. So this is the end of GPT-3.5. Okay, let's go ahead and take these for a test right here. First, let me just go ahead and show you the speed and then I'll compare these prompts over here. So this is gonna be a writing prompt and I'm gonna specifically use a marketing example for this to write a product so I could compare it to GPT-40 mini in that. So this is 4.0 by the way, look at the speed. Okay, pretty good, we're used to this speed right now. And then I'm gonna click right here and let's compare it to GPT-40 mini. Let's choose this model and look at the speed of that way faster, right? So that's gonna be great, especially for people using ChatGPT for free. Now they have this model that's good and is fast and is free. Okay, now let me go ahead and compare the answer. So let me go back to the previous. And as far as formatting, looks like 4.0 did a better job. We have a nice heading here that's bold. GPT 4.0 mini, which is this one. 
And by the way, if you click this, this is how you could quickly compare models and the same response within the same chat. So you don't have to go on top over here and switch models. So that's typically how I like to use it and get answers from both of the top models that are always inside of ChatGPT just to compare. And as I'm reading through the text here, I think they both did a good job as far as how they wrote this description here. I just think 4.0 did a better job. Now, this is not quite a fair test because the free model is not supposed to be GPT-40 and they're not saying it's supposed to be GPT-40, but I did want to show you that it's actually pretty comparable, right? This is not that far off as far as the tone goes, as far as following my instruction goes. And I'm going to use more complex prompts in a minute to show you what it's capable of and where it falls short. But so far in my early testing, as far as writing goes, especially practical writings, coming up with marketing copy, sales copy, it's done a pretty good job. Now for this next example, let me try a mega prompt. These are one page or longer prompts. And a lot of times the lesser models fall short. Basically they drop something in the middle of this prompt. They just don't follow instructions all the way through. They may do something that I said in the very beginning, sometimes at the end, a lot of it in the middle always gets lost. And this one has examples, it's pretty complex here. It has a placeholder. And this is by the way, a PDF that I have that's free on my website and you could get it as a PDF download here on Dropbox. So I'll link that in the description, put your email in and it will be sent to your email. And you will also be part of our newsletter, which you could obviously unsubscribe to, but we've created a newsletter that is focused on AI education, not AI news. So we have a little bit of news, but we mostly create these kind of resources and we do weekly tutorials and we send that to you usually once or twice a week. And if you download this, you could be part of our newsletter too and I'll send you more resources. Now for this prompt, I used a very specific format and I given an example how I want the output. So I want it to be inside of this bracket. I want it to look exactly like this with a title and a brief description. Okay, this followed just about everything I had inside of this prompt, it's done a good job. Okay, let's go ahead and test it out with GPT-40 Mini. Okay, much, much faster output here. Followed the same exact format. So it did put it inside of this blog post idea bracket. Again, let's see, yep, we have 10 here. The future of marketing, leveraging generative AI for personalized campaign. Okay, this one is an exact tie. So I don't see any difference here that shows me one model beating another model here. So GPT-40, GPT-40 mini, same exact output. So a lot of the times it really depends on prompts. So when you're using these kind of prompts, as long as it doesn't go too long, I found prompts, these mega prompts are usually better in less than a page. I've seen people giving away prompts that are three, four pages. No model right now is gonna be capable of doing a good job. Most of that context in that is gonna get lost in the shuffle. So usually I keep my prompts, these mega prompts, up to a page long, but no longer. And I found GPT-40 was doing a good job and it looks like GPT-40 mini so far is doing a really good job too with that. Okay, for this next one, I wanna see how it summarizes text because a lot of us use ChatGPT to summarize text and repurpose text for other platforms. Provide two summaries. First one, two to three sentences. Next one, five to six sentences and includes more detail. Let's go to this page and let's copy literally the entire page here. Take it back, paste that here and let's send it out. OpenAI has launched GPT-40, cost efficient AI model designed to expand the range of application offering a lower price. Okay, good. So exactly two sentences there. This one is closer to four or five sentences. Again, it's done a good job. It's pulled in the right numbers. All right, let's check GPT-40. Okay, this one was a lot slower in response, but okay, same kind of thing. Let's compare. All right, again, it's a tie. They both did a really good job. The tone is much better than what it used to be back in the day with GPT 3.5. So this new model GPT 4.0 mini, I know a lot of people stopped using chat GPT when they used only GPT 3.5. I kept trying to get people to upgrade to 4 to 4.0 and they didn't see the benefit because 3.5, the tone was terrible. It was overly promotional. It was using weird words all the time. It looks like GPT 4.0 mini is trained not to do things like that. I haven't seen the kind of tone that GPT 3.5 had. Now let's try complex reasoning and I've tested this before and GPT-40 gets this one right. At a party, each guest shakes hands with every other guest exactly once. There were a total of 66 handshakes. How many guests at a party? Right now, this is GPT-40 mini. By the way, prompts like this, a lot of times you can improve this prompt by just saying, think through this step by step and it will kind of walk through the steps 
but here it looks like it's already done that and it's done the math here in front of you and the answer should be 12. Let's try GPT-40. Okay, a little bit slower here, but let's see if we come to the same conclusion. Much slower actually. Came to the same conclusion. So it says negative 11 or 12, but guess number can't be negative. All right, again, it's a tie. Some of the early writing examples, it was more a personal preference that I thought GPT-401, but so far I haven't seen anything that shows GPT-40 mini falling short of GPT-40. Okay, in this one, I'm gonna repurpose content and I wanna see if it could extract lessons from a very long script and then actually turn it into tweets and LinkedIn posts. This is one of the most practical ways. I use AI, a lot of people in the world of business and content creation use AI this way. So it says extract core lessons and actionable tips from this YouTube script and create tweets or LinkedIn post suitable for consumption. In this case, I'm just gonna say a concise LinkedIn post. This is one of the videos I made recently, GPT-40 versus Claude. So I have the transcript over here. I'm gonna copy the entire transcript. It's pretty long. This is 25 minute video. Okay, there it is. And look at the size of this prompt. This is a 25 minute transcript directly from YouTube inside of GPT-4 mini and it has no problem taking in that as a prompt. In my latest test, I compared GPT-4. Okay, drop the O. It seems like a lot of times these models drop when I say 4.0, they just change it to 4, which would be incorrect. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is spelled this incorrectly across practical, but this might be just based on the transcript being incorrect in the first place. But overall, it's done a really good job. It's created some hashtag for us. Let me just see if GPT-4.0 makes the same mistakes. In our latest AI showdown, so far I don't like how this is starting. We tested, that's not good. I'm sure I said I. GPT-40, okay, same issue. So this is, looks like it's based on the transcript. Claw 3.5, it should say Sonnet here because we need to know the name of the model. It did not pull that in. In fact, let's see, nowhere does it say Claw 3.5 Sonnet here. Now the overall structure, very similar. Like let's go back to this one, right? Pretty identical. But this time I think GPT-40 mini did a little bit of a better job, right? We got Sonnet even though it's misspelled. I don't know, I think GPT-40 mini in this very specific use case actually beat GPT-40. I think I would use the one that I got out of GPT-40 mini here as an actual post on LinkedIn. Okay, now two big limitations I wanna point out. I did test this for coding and when it came to GPT-40 and GPT-40 mini, it was not very comparable. GPT-40 beats GPT-40 mini in coding. It's, there's almost no point on me showing you because I wasn't getting very useful codes, but again, I've only been testing it for a few hours. GPT-40 still falls short to Claude son Sonnet anyway, 3.5 Sonnet. So if you're coding right now, using AI or getting assistant with AI to debug your code, whatever you're doing related to coding, Sonnet is the way to go anyway. So there's almost no point using GPT-40 mini. Also a practical thing inside of ChatGPT. If I use 4.0, I get a little option over here to upload files, to use data analysis, right? Things like that, even with the free version with some limitations. But if I use 4.0 right now, I can't upload anything. I can't analyze anything, all those functions that I think are coming soon to GPT-40. As I'm recording this, the 4.0 mini does not have that option. So that's gonna really limit it with a lot of use cases, especially when it comes to analyzing pictures, data, pulling text from screenshots, all the different types of things that I use ChatGPT for. But the free version does have 4.0, but when it gets out of credits in your free version and even in your paid version, it's gonna knock you down to GPT-40 mini and that option is gonna go away. So hopefully they roll that out because GPT-4, which they call it a legacy model now, but that still has that option over here, but that's gonna be extremely slow these days. So if you use GPT-4 and then you switch to 40 mini, it's gonna be really frustrating with how slow this responds now. And I also wanted to mention that because of all these changes, we're actually updating our main courses inside of skillleap.ai. So our ultimate AI course, which covers a lot of prompt techniques and chat GPT, is going through a change right now, which is funny because I just updated this course, which we initially made about a year ago. It went through a full update last month, but because this is a membership platform, we make sure all our courses 
get updated very frequently. So every time a change happens to ChatGPT, other AI tools, we change our courses and update them. So our complete ChatGPT course is gonna go through some updates related to GPT-40 mini. And if you're not familiar with this, this is a membership. You get access to all our courses right now and it has a free trial. So you could jump in there, try a course if you like it, try another course, and then you could stick around. We have a community section where you could ask me questions. I respond to every single comment and you could get access to other members. And we send out weekly resources. And every time we have a new course, you get access to it automatically. So we cover pretty much every new latest AI tool techniques. And it's really designed mostly for entrepreneurs, creators, and marketers. So I'll link this in the description below as well. And if you haven't used Claude 3.5 Sonnet, I did compare that with GPT-4.0. So that's worth a look. Those are the two best models right now. And I'll put that video right here for you to watch next. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time.